Welcome to lesson four of Investigating Science module three. And in this video, we're going to be looking at our final inquiry question. How can a model be constructed to simplify understanding of a scientific concept? So the first thing I want you to have a look at is what is the difference between modeling and a diorama and what makes you say that? So pause the video now and complete that do now. Okay, when we're looking at lesson four today, we're going to actually practice um, this descriptor from the syllabus uh, before we actually have a go at creating our own model. So this will be kind of a trial run so we can get through it, make sure we're all on the same page. Um, we know how to complete each of these four descriptors um, to a really high quality um, before you are uh, given your assessment to work on over the next few weeks. So we're going to have to plan a model with reference to scientific literature. Now, luckily for you, there's no planning involved in this one. You're just conducting one that's already planned. Um, when you're using, you are actually going to construct it. So following the instructions um, to represent your scientific concept, uh, you're going to demonstrate how the model can be used to make a prediction and then present and evaluate the model through peer feedback. So to do that, we're going to have to look again at referencing our secondary sources. So make sure you refer to the secondary sources video again if you're not sure how to do that. Um, you're going to construct a model of climate change using the resources. Um, utilize this model to make predictions about the future of global warming and then present your version of your model that you've created um, through a hangout meet to practice obtaining peer feedback. So just a few tips and tricks um, to think about when you're constructing models. So I've got here a list of dot points about what makes a good model. So they're based on reliable observations and they're able to explain the characteristics of these observations that were used to formulate it. They are predictive and they're able to explain phenomena that were not used to develop the model. They're able to be refined um, when new and credible and conflicting observations arise and they're limited and simplifies a concept theory of an object. And then here they can be physical, so two or three dimensions, mathematical or conceptual, so digital or print, or they may be a computer or physical simulation. So those four dot points are ones that we've already looked at already um, in terms of what model we would create for the scientific concept we are trying to depict there. When we talk about evaluating constructed models, we are going to have to make judgments about the effectiveness or equality um, of the model there. And this allows us to improve its effectiveness and therefore inform our decisions about how we might design, develop and implement our model further. So I liked this Kirkpatrick model here. So um, the descriptors that you can briefly see here weren't very relevant to us, but in terms of um, using this model to evaluate uh, so using this model of feedback to evaluate your scientific model. So what was your initial reaction? What learning can you see there? How may it influence your behavior? And then what are the results that we see there? So I quite like that in terms of evaluating models. And then the next concept is peer feedback. So we've already talked about peer review, but the little diagram on the left there talks about um, I guess a cartoon version of what a peer review process would be in terms of um, studying something, collecting the results, writing the paper, sending it to the editor um, for peer review, other scientists reading it, giving their feedback, um, and then if it meets the peer standards we're publishing. So in this way, we are not we are looking at peer review, but we are also going to focus on peer feedback and how we can get feedback on models that we create. Um, so the model I like to use here is warm and cool feedback. So warm feedback. So when this is about how you would give feedback to your peers when you're looking at their models and what you can expect from your peers when they're looking at yours. So warm feedback is focusing on the positive aspects. So um, there's some sentence starters there that you might use. So it was really interesting when you, I really like it, how your model shows this. Um, and then cool feedback is some areas that need improvement. So um, really framing it in a positive way 